All right, hi Nigerians, Kika is here again, your one and only host for your Art Weekly radio show. Oh yes, I said so, and that is Real Talk with Kike. I hope we are doing fine in this period, and it is good to know Nigerians are doing their own beats individually and as a nation in the fight against COVID-19. On the show today, we will be digressing from all negativities. We will be discussing how to manage fear and the psychological and social challenges with the average Nigerians during the pandemic. All right, so if you're just tuning in to the program for the first time, this is Real Talk with Kike. Please, you can catch up by following us on our Instagram page and subscribe to our YouTube page. So for our Omolua this session, Kotsi um, Goldberg, one of our sponsors, is going to be called Ireti for today's episode. It is the Yoruba word for hope. It is equally, or would I say, the quality of an Omoluabi that inspires optimism, faith, and expectation of goodness that is to come. And I hope that all of that will come soon with everything that is ongoing around the globe at the moment. So now, more than ever, this cause have become higher and the lockdown has painted shades of different challenges, especially to those who survive on daily earnings. You know, there are a lot of people that is by those tips that they get every day that they, that they base their own living on. It would be, it would of course be an unpleasant and unwarranted scenarios for these same Nigerians to have fear to the scales of worries in this period. Our guest today on the show is a certified life coach with years of experience and and expansive um, studies in the field of psychology. We are engaging the CEO of Olushala Larry Coaching Academy, the OLCA. Let's give him a warm welcome. Welcome, Mr. Larry Olushala. It is a pleasure and a relief to have you in the studio with me today. Thank you so much for sharing part of your evening with me. Thank you very much, Kike, for having me on the show. Yeah. Real talk with Kike. Yes, correct. Thank you so much, sir. Can you know, can we know Olushala better? The catalyst tracks the recognition as far as I'm concerned. Who is the catalyst? Well, you know, over the last 20 years across Africa, I've worked with several high-profile executives and high-profile organizations, including the World Bank, the UK government, the US Embassy, um, the UK High Commission, General Electric, Ericsson, Total, Chevron, MTN, First Bank, FCMB, GT Bank, Glow, Airtel, just mention it. I'm simply um, one that transforms lives by transforming minds. I also transform organizations and I transform people. So I'm called a catalyst and I help people and organizations and nations transition from where they currently are to where they deserve to be, where they're designed to be, and where they desire to be faster than they can all by themselves. Ah, interesting. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. So life coaching, many people would have never had thought that uh, life can be coached until it had gained prominence in the late 20th century, if I may say. What is the reason, reason for this? What is the essence of life coaching, if I may ask? <laughs> you know, um, if you want to be successful as a medical doctor, if you want to succeed as an architect and as, as an accountant or a civil engineer, what do you do? Um, you go to school, right? Yeah, uh, correct. You go and acquire the knowledge and the expertise about each of those, those um, uh, you know, professions. Yeah. Um, you know, but... How will your profession be if if your life was in disarray? Mm. Uh, how successful would you be if your life is in disarray? So if you want to be a successful business person, you go to a business school or you go and learn about business. But the very life that is the anchor of every expression, whether it's a medical doctor, an architect, an engineer, the very life, people leave it to chance. Mm. And if your life is in disarray, there's no expression of that life that can be successful, significant, or relevant. And so, life coaches and life coaches are people that that have built the expertise and have, have acquired the tools and methodologies to help you live and and create a successful, 
happy, fulfilled, and satisfying life. Mm-hmm. Because it is that life that you give birth to. It is that life that you give expression to. It is that life that ensures that you're a successful wife. It is that life that ensures that you're a successful husband. So successful home and family and marriage is, a, is a, an expression of a successful person, a, a, a successful life. Mm-hmm. Also, in your career or in your business, if, if you're not right as a human being, as a person, it will be absolutely impossible for you to, to build success and significance and relevance in your place of work or your expression of work. Absolutely. Also, in your spirituality, in your self-esteem, in your relationships and social networks with people. So you find out that at the very heart of all human expression mm-hmm. lies the life. And it is first life, it is first hope, it is first belief, it is first faith that, that is at the heart of every achievement. And so, where do people go if they want to... Hello? It's the essence. That's why life coaching is gained, you know, significant, you know... <coughs> You know, a mileage over the years. All right. Now, um, P- PWC just re- uh, released a research that they did, and they said that the life coaching industry is the second fastest industry in the world after ICT. Mm-hmm. That tells you how important life coaching and You're coaching right. Have You're right. Thank you so much Bill for Gates that. Say, Bill Gates says that everybody needs a coach. The <laughs> in the world yeah, absolutely. Says everybody needs a so coach. So find a balance in one's life and uh, w- workplace and your personal life. Definitely, we need a coach. And I would say that you've been doing a wonderful job in that line. Thank you so much for your Very impact much. to the society at large. So let's just go straight to. COVID-19. According to BBC, um, the fear of coronavirus is changing our psychological, uh, our, our psychology. What, what's your take on it? How true is this? Well, it is true. Um, you know, um, fear and faith are one and the same. They are twins. Um, you know, fear is you believe something. Faith mm. is you believe something. Mm-hmm. But the thing about fear is you believe something negative. And faith is that you believe something positive. Mm-hmm. And what is the what is the source of all faith or fear? It is information. Mm-hmm. And if we look around us now, right, visually, auditory, what is the information that is bombarding us left, right, center, forward? If you tune to CNN, if you tune to Inspiration FM, if you tune to, you know, your social media, the only information that people are getting are uh, information centered around COVID-19. Sure. Um, all that people hear is devastation, is pandemic, is outbreak, is helplessness, is hopelessness, desperation, death, virus. Of course, people are going to be stressed. People are going to be, you know, worried. People are going to be anxious. They are going to be afraid. People are going to go into panic and anxiety because faith and fear comment by hearing, by seeing. It's a function of the information. So, so listening to you, what, what are we doing wrong in reaction to the pandemic as Nigerians that is detrimental to our mental health and our lives generally? I think I not, we're, not re, we're not covering the right information. Yes, it is important for people to stay at home. It is important for people to you know, observe the right um, you, 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 um, um, actions. They take the right actions, you know, and they stay at home, they wash their hands. It's important that, you know, people wear um, gloves, they wear face masks. It's important that they take vitamin C, vitamin D. It's important that, that, that we do all of the things that all the medical experts have asked us to do so that we can flatten the curve we can, you know, we can um, protect other people and ourselves, um, social um, distancing and all of that. But most importantly, it is social media distancing and news distancing, which means that, you know what, it is very, very key that news um, agencies, they portray the right information. Yeah. We can only fight, one of the ways that we can fight fear is facts. And the fact speaks for themselves. Right. So as we speak today, you know, there's been 1.4 million people that have been tested and there's been about 82,500 deaths. Mm. If we do that ratio, 
right? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, out of 1.4 or uh, 1.5 million people, 82,000 people are dying, mm -hmm. and 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 we feel for the people that are, are losing their lives. Yeah. However, if we if we critically look at it, right, more people are surviving than dying. True. Right? How many people? How many media houses are portraying that information? But focus is on. IFM is doing that. Right? <laughs> yes, because. Because because Inspiration FM is set up to inspire people. Yeah. You can only Thank inspire you. people with with you can only inspire people with positive news. True. It's all about the good news. So out of the one point four million people that have been infected, right? Yeah. One point three plus million people have survived. Hmm. Why not portray that information rather than the 82,000 people that have died? And today? I agree with yeah, you. Yeah. And I must give it to um, Governor Sawolu on this because I'm very sure every time they want to put out their content, they are always, you know, quite sensitive about people who are now negative with, as in people that have already, uh, be, uh, what's it called, affected by coronavirus. So most of the time when they are isolated, they come out and say, okay, we now have over five or over uh, 30 people who have now survived coronavirus because it's as good as trying to manage people's, um, um, uh, what's it called, is it expectations or their fear and the likes and all of that. So I agree completely with you. But talking about social distancing and self-isolation that you earlier mentioned, we can agree that this, in a way, is affecting our social lives in the short period. How do we balance out or achieve a better social life and as in against post uh, COVID nineteen uh, period? I think um, it's a mindset issue. Um, you know, rather than think that um, you know we've been sentenced to prison, mm. um, you know, uh, which gives us a sense of suffering. And pain. Uh, we should think that this gives us an opportunity to rest. It gives us a, an opportunity to connect with family. It gives us an opportunity to bond with family. It gives us an opportunity to strategize, to yeah. pause, we strategize and reset. Mm. Um, your perception, your mindset changes the whole equation. Sure. If you think that you've been sentenced um, to prison as an inmate, um, then you would have a sense of suffering and pain. If you believe that this gives you an opportunity to get to know yourself, to get to know your family, to get to bond with your family, to get to, to do the things and learn the things that you haven't had the time to learn, you know, um, you will see from a different perspective. So mm. focus is one of the critical ways that we can, we can beat this. Mm. Now, you know, we know that psychology is at the heart of everything. You know, your psychology determines your biology. Your mm. psychology determines your outputs and your outcomes in life. It's about garbage in, garbage out. What are you listening to? What are you seeing? What are you thinking? Because as a man thinks in his heart, mm. so is he. Mm. So what are you constantly thinking? Mm. What are you constantly doing? What are you constantly focusing on? The truth of the matter is, is that the only thing that has changed is that we're not allowed to step out of the house. Nothing yes. else changed, right? People are still working. However, they're working virtually. Yeah. Mm. We have to come to terms with the fact that digital has come to stay. Yes. Imagine right. if there was no internet. Imagine if there was no data. It would have been worse. But guess what? Everyone is on the internet now. And I want to say a big thank you to the data companies, to the, to the telecom, telecom companies, com, because, yeah. because, man... They've, ma the they've made life a bit easy for, for us all. Yeah, thank you so much for that. So recently you shared um, in one of your masterclass se uh, session, and I quote, the impact of our psychology on our biology. I don't know if I quote that right, but can our audience know briefly how our thinking affects our psychological beings? All right, so the, the very first thing that I want to say is that According to Bruce Lipton, 95% mm -hmm. of all disease is mm -hmm. caused by stress. Mm -hmm. And 100% of stress is caused by a wrong belief. Mm -hmm. Let me take that again. 95% of all disease is caused by stress. And 100% of stress is caused by a wrong belief. belief. So, yes, a wrong belief. So, what is stress? Stress is a feeling of emotional and mm -hmm. physical tension. Stress comes to events that happen outside of you. Mm. Now, when those events happen, there's a way that you see it 
there's a way that you react to it. And that's a function of how you think about your situation. So it either brings about frustration, anger, fear, worry, anxiety, or panic. And your body begins to respond to your mind, your psychology, <laughs> your psychology. Yeah. Now that is where your psychology affects your biology. Now, stress is a medium between your psychology and your biology. Even the World Health Organization has said that 80 to 90 percent of health challenges they are preventable, yes. and they account for 90 percent of healthcare costs on individuals and organizations and nations. But 95 percent of them are stress related. So when you go to the hospital, the first question that the doctors will ask you is, "What happened in your lifestyle? What happened to you? What is stressing you? Are you stressed? You, you know, because they understand this construct." that 95% of all disease is caused by stress. Mm. Now, if you understand that, then the onus lies on you to be careful about the information you take in. That's the first thing. Secondly, sure. to be careful about how you process that information. Thirdly, to be careful about how you respond and you react to it. All right. Because your response and your reaction determines whether your body goes into growth mode or protection mode. All right. Thank you growth so much what, for what sharing that. Cells grow. Yeah. And protection mode is what, you know, destroys your cells and opens you up to attack because your immunity level drops. Mm. Thank you so much for that. We'll go on a quick break and return after a word from our sponsors and have some real talk with the catalyst. Stay tuned. We will be right back. Welcome back from the break. If you are just tuning in, this is Real Talk with Kike and we have been on the program with our life coach and a world-class mentor who has been teaching us how to manage our psychological and social well-being in the period of this pandemic. Please join us by calling the phone line 0700-923-923-923 again 0700-923-923-923 or send us a message on 0817 313-6193 and let's fuel your pause if you have any questions for our guest I call him the powerhouse thinker I've always admired him so you know you can call in and just share your queries your comment thank you so much for joining us again today the catalyst thank you it's so nice to have you or share part of your time with us today so going straight to uh, another point hello Hello, I'm here. Yeah, so there's a conspiracy theory referred to as the New World Order. That's my own, uh, um, uh, that's how I want to look at it, that has been propagated on online. Is the pandemic actually paving way for this school of thought? What's your view on this, you know? And I know that when you mentioned earlier that uh, Bill Gates, I wanted to also mention that Bill Gates is also talking about some vaccines that women, women, uh, women beings are supposed to be taking now after all this uh, post-COVID-19. Uh, so I'm asking myself, how do we go about this with this new world order? When I talk about new world, I'm talking about the likes of 5G and the likes of the conspiracies going on in the world right now. Yeah. You know, you know, during the time of Jesus, there were conspiracies. <laughs> there, were, there will never be a time where there will never be conspiracies. All right, we ha can you hold your thought, please? We have a caller on the line. Hello. 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 Yeah. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from, please? Oh gosh, we lost that. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yes, I'm here. So I was saying, right, that during the time of Jesus, there was conspiracy theory. During the time of Moses, there was conspiracy theory. During the time of Apostle Paul, there was, so there, and, and, and forever, there will always be conspiracy theories, right? All right, we have another call on the line right now. Can you please hold your thoughts, sir? Oh, Hello. Hello, hi. What's your name and where are you calling from, please? Um, this is good luck. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Is this uh, issue of saying again? Yes. We are all years. Oh, yeah. Hello. Are you hearing me? Yeah, we can hear you. The catalyst is on the line, it's please. Issue of saying at home. Yes. It's, well, you know, it's for our own good. Mm -hmm. But the issue of people saying at home, nothing, people are suffering, no food, no <laughs> water, everything is just somehow. 
Hey. People are really tough, you know. It's not really easy for people. All right, we, we get like, the message. Where I am now, no light, nothing. And they expect us to stay at some indoor like that. All right, thank you. We get your message. We have another call on the line, please. Hello, what's your name and where are you calling from, please? Good evening, Kike. This is Balaji calling from here for Open State. All um, right. Thumbs up for the job you're doing, just by the pandemic scare. Um, um, the catalyst, I want to thank him too for the job he's doing. Thank and you. And I think that um, Lagos State Government and NCDC are doing quite a good job in spreading the facts and the news as they are. Yeah. Um, but... My question for the catalyst is, how should the layman, because these lame people and the average less educated Nigerians that mm. want to spread in the false news, mm. and they are the majority, how should, they, how should we differentiate from false news from the facts that they all, that they all spread on social media? Because that is where, that is where the basis of, that's the basis of this uh, spreading of um, false news, um, conspiracy theories and the likes. Thank you so much for Balaji. Sad, over to you. All right. So yeah. let me just take both. You know, stay at home, set in on things. That's Mrs. Good Luck. Okay. You know, it is true. Um, and, you know, the one of the questions that I always ask myself when I go through a difficult situation mm. is what is the wisdom that I can take away from it? Mm. What is the learning from it? Mm. And one sure. of the greatest things that you can, you can learn from this is everybody needs to have an emergency account. Mm. An emergency account is an account that will sustain you for 12 months mm. without you working. Now, the people that are complaining, the people that are, you know, worst hit now are the people that don't have a savings and the people that don't have an emergency account. Mm. That is, they eat all that they earn. Mm. And that's the essence of what Titan was trying to teach us, mm. that never eat everything you earn. Put away some amount of money every time. So even if you are making 5,000 naira, put away 500 naira every month. Put it into an exco account that will serve as an emergency fund. I agree with you. Yeah. You know, everybody should use this as a, a learning point. Yes. If you are earning 2,000 naira, put away 200 naira. Mm. Don't think that until you start earning 2 million naira. If you cannot do it with 2,000 or 5,000, you would never be able with to with 2 million. It's true. So people need to develop a saving culture mm. and a culture for an emergency fund. Speaking to Bolaji's issue, how can the layman differentiate between false news and truth? You see, the problem that we have today, especially with social media, mm. is that people are too bothered about being the first person to share it rather than being the person that shares the truth. Mm. I think when we get any news, the first thing that we need to do is to pause and do a research. Is this true? Mm. And if it is true, then you can go ahead and share it. Mm. Now, the second question you want to ask yourself is, does this add value to anybody else? Yeah. Will this inspire someone positively? Will this add value and help somebody else? If it will not, don't share it. All right. Thank you so much for that. Certainly. For, so because of, because of time, this might be my last question to you. Certainly our productive um, capacity have dropped and we may be experiencing the same in, in our general lives even after work resumes for everyday negotiations. What is your advice for Nigerians? Please, in one minute, sir. No. All right. It's important that you use this uh, period to reset. Because when was the last time you went on a holiday like this? When mm. was the last time you paused? Mm. And brother, people go on holidays because they want to be more productive, more, um, you know, they want to improve their performance. So for all of us, it's time for us to reset and to restart it there. So what you want to be thinking is what is the problem that you believe that you were created to, mm. to, to solve? And that is why we're putting out uh, free coaching. So anybody that has any questions, that has any issues, Right, go to my social media every evening at 6 p.m. I am having conversations on my Instagram. Yeah, so I saw tonight, that. I'm having conversations about disruption mm. in 2020 and beyond. Right, yeah. tomorrow, I'm having another conversation every day at 6 p.m. I'm having conversations, so people right. should tune in to my Instagram live, Larry Olushola, and right. we're going to be giving out free coaching. Oh, to interesting. That need it. All right. Thank you so much. I will be joining as well. Thank you so much for your time. And of course, we value you. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. So, our closing remarks, courtesy Omolo Abi personality from Goldberg, is see, tell me, Banwa, this is 
this translates to what the, when there is life, there is hope. In this period of pandemic around the globe, Goldberg and I would say Epis wishes all Nigerians to show hope that the battle is almost won and the storm will soon be over. Thank you so much for joining us today, our listeners, and thank you for tuning in. And thanks to our catalyst, the one and only Olushola in Nigeria, across Africa. I will be back next week with another Real Talk. But until then, please remember, every Nigerian should be responsible for their health. Only the go- Not only the government can do this, and it's more about your life. Please ensure proper hygiene. Please stay uh, responsible. Bye for now.